Hello children. Now we are going to continue with the topic that we have started uh, that is uh, management of natural resources. Today we are going to uh, start with the topic forest and wildlife. Now forest is what it is uh, uh, in the forest it is the existence of wide variety of species of plants animals and microorganisms in a natural habitat within a particular environment so when many microorganisms animals variety of animals variety of plants they live or exist in a particular area or a natural habitat that we can uh, call as a forest now regarding biodiversity there is one more term that is biodiversity biodiversity is what it is the number of species or range of different life forms found there that is we can say different life forms in a forest is biodiversity now forest are we can say in other words that they are the biodiversity hot spots forests are biodiversity hot spots and the loss of biodiversity may lead to a loss of ecological stability now next topic is stakeholders of forest who are the people who live in the forest and what are the benefits they are drawing from the forest the, those people we can call as the stakeholders of forest there are four, four categories of these stakeholders who reside in a forest the first is people who live in or around forest who live in or around forest second type of category is forest department of the government these people also reside in the forest forest department uh, which is a government agency the third category of the people who reside in forest are industrialist and they are drawing lot of benefits from the forest fourth category is wildlife and nature enthusiast wildlife and nature enthusiast so people who live in around or for forest let us take the first category these people depend on forest produce for various aspects of their life the local people need large quantities of firewood and small timber bamboo is also used to make slates for herds baskets for collecting and storing food implements for agriculture fishing and hunting are largely made of wood people collect fruits nuts medicines from forest their cattle also graze in the forest so these are the benefits these people who live in the forest they are drawing from the forest second is the forest department which owns the land and controls the forest resources people develop practice to ensure that forest resources are used in sustainable manner and if they were over exploited after the because of some people they should uh, it should be stopped forest department of independent india then owns the land and controls the resources of the forest but local needs such as herbs fruits were ignored monoculture of pine teak or eucalyptus have been stated started sorry which can destroy the biodiversity of the area the third type of category is industrialists these consider the forest as a source of raw materials for uh, their factories and these industry industries are not only interested for the sustainability of the forest in one area as they go to different area after cutting down all the trees in one area the fourth category or fourth type of stakeholders they are wildlife and the nature enthusiasts they are not dependent on the forest but conserve nature and take part in its management conservationists started with conserving large animals but are now preserving biodiversity as a whole the local people for instance the bishnoi community in rajasthan work for the conservation of forest and wildlife as a religious act thus management of forest resources has to take the interest of various stakeholders into account traditional use of forest our next topic is it is also related to forest the traditional use of forest Alpine grasslands in Himalayas were grazed by sheep in summer and nomadic shepherds drove drove their flock every summer in this area but when the great himalayan national park was formed this practice was put to an end this resulted in tall grasses preventing fresh growth 
Now, causes of damage to the forest. Next topic is causes of damage. Why forests are getting damaged? What are the various reasons behind this? The first and foremost reason is local people. Local people damage forest to fulfill their need, daily needs. Second is the second basic reason is deforestation. And third basic reason is uh, it can be tourists also for making arrangements uh, for them. So forests are clear. Now next topic is the conservation of forest. Conservation of forests. It includes the following methods. How we can conserve and protect the forest. The first, uh, the first uh, method is afforestation. It is a practice of transforming an area into forest uh, have not grown there. It involves three types of forestry programs. First is social forestry. Second is agroforestry. Third is urban forestry. Now in social forestry it involves the raising of trees for firewood, fodder and agricultural implements for the benefit of rural and tribal community. Urban forestry involves growing of ornamental trees along roads. Agroforestry uh, involves a commercial forestry which is developed to fulfill the need of various forest based industries. Now people participation in uh, forest management. An example of Arbery forest range of Midnapur district. Around 1272 hectares of badly degraded child forest conserved by a far seeing forest officer A.K. Banerjee. So this is how many people they take initiative to manage the forest. Okay, now if I give you an example of managing the forest by individual people, that is we can cover this in the topic forest management. The Sal forest in West Bengal, Sal forest in West Bengal got reduced alarmingly in 1972. Now there were many measures taken to protect the forest which resulted in frequent clash between forest officials and the villagers. The department then changed its strategy in the Ar Arbari forest. Villagers were involved in the protection of badly damaged Sal forest. It was protected by villagers. By 1983 the Arbari forest showed a remarkable recovery. Now economic growth and ecological conservation Forest resources should be used in uh, an environmentally and developmentally sound manner. That is, it should be used in friendly manner. Uh, we can say forest resources should be used judiciously. Should be used judiciously. Second, if the exploitation is too high, economic and social development will be faster but environment will further deteriorate. We should use natural resources cautiously so that economic growth and ecological conservation go hand in hand. Ecological conservation. Now next is Amrita Devi Bishnoi Award. Bishnoi National Award. Amrita Devi Bishnoi sacrificed her life along with 363 persons for the protection of Khejri trees in Khejri village near Jodhpur in Rajasthan. In her memory, Government of India has recently instituted this award for wildlife conservation. Now related to this only, we are going to start with what Chipko movement. You might have heard about this Chipko movement. During 1970, in rainy village of Garwal, a contractor was allowed to cut trees in a forest near the valley. When the contractor's workers went to the forest to cut trees, the human of the, the sorry, the women of the village hugged the tree trunks to prevent the workers from cutting trees. Chipko means to hug. Chipko literally means to hug. So they have embraced or hugged the trees so that they should not be cut down. And this movement started by villages by hugging trees is called as a 
चिपको आंदोलन और वीकेंड से चिपको मूवमेंट नो नेक्स्ट टॉपिक रिलेटेड टू द फॉरेस्ट कंजर्वेशन इज सस्टेनेबल डेवलपमेंट इट इज अ डेवलपमेंट विच कैन बी मेंटेन फॉर अ लॉन्ग टाइम विदाउट अनड्यू डैमेज टू द एनवायरमेंट एंड द जॉब ऑब्जेक्टिव बिहाइंड दिस इज टू प्रोवाइड द इकोनॉमिकल वेलबींग ऑफ द प्रेजेंट एंड ऑफ द फ्यूचर जनरेशन नेक्स्ट इंपॉर्टेंट टॉपिक रिलेटेड टू मैनेजमेंट ऑफ नेचुरल रिसोर्सेस इज वॉटर एज यू ऑल नो चिल्ड्रन वॉटर इज अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट सोर्स इट इज लाइफ फॉर एस इट इज वेल्यूएबल नेशनल एसेट and it is a main requirement of human beings it is of two types salt water and fresh water so if we talk about the water resources resources first important resource of water is rain second is underground water third is we can also obtain water from the dams constructed dams and canals now next topic about the management of water resources how we are managing these resources management of water resources it includes the following things first it includes integrated watershed plan for drinking irrigation and industrial uses integrated watershed second important point is flood control we can control floods so this is also one of the important method third is transfer of surplus water to water deficit basins by interlinking of rivers interlinking of rivers fourth important point is uh, hydrogeological survey fifth important point is artificial recharging of ground water recharging of ground water and the most important point is public awareness programs now the, the most important resource or how we can manage the water resources is uh, dams as you might have heard about it now large dams can also ensure the storage of adequate water canal system leading from dams transfer large quantity of water up to great distances like indira gandhi canal of rajasthan brought greenery to considerable areas now mismanagement of water distribution due to mismanagement in distribution of water the benefit of constructing a dam goes to few people only for example people close to the water source grow water intensive crop like sugarcane and rice while people farther down downstream do not get any water now the first way of mismanagement is first is watershed management water shed management second point is water harvesting it uh, water harvesting means capturing rain water where it falls or capturing runoff water in a local area and taking measures to keep the water clean by not allowing polluting activities to take place now there are various techniques of water harvesting water harvesting techniques are mainly location specific it is an age old concept in india the various water harvesting techniques first is khadins or tanks second bandharas third is ahars and pines which is a common technique in bihar fourth is kuls in himachal pradesh fifth important technique is ponds like in the belt of jammu sixth important technique is eris which are also called as tanks in tamil nadu seventh technique is surang dams in kerala and last technique is kattas this is a common technique in karnataka now some of the water harvesting techniques are capturing of runoff water from the rooftops capturing runoff water from the local catchment or seasonal flood water from local streams benefits of water harvesting now this is very important children since we are harvesting water what are the benefits 
how we are getting benefited so these are the benefits of water harvesting first is it provides drinking water provides drinking water second is it provide uh, water for irrigation water for irrigation third uh, it increases ground water resources and fourth it reduces storm water discharge urban flood and overloading of sewage treatment plants it reduces overloading of sewage treatment plants thank you